Hey cellists, cello guru Marcy Brown here. Welcome to the Soulful Sounds Sessions number two. We are working on our soulful sound because we are cellists. It is our job to make the most gorgeous tones known in the history of mankind. So we are spending this week warming up on our sound. And right now we're just doing open strings so that we don't have to worry about the left hand. We'll be adding the left hand tomorrow. Um, but as you know, when you add the left hand, then pitch is something that we have to think about. And right now I don't want you thinking about pitch. I want you just thinking about sound. That's why we're cellists, right? That's why we're all cellists. So I'm so glad you're here, Shu in Alaska. Everybody write in the comments who's here. If you're watching this later, please write in the comments and ask any questions that you have. But this is a great, great reminder that we have to get a great sound and we have to think about it every day. Hi, Barbara in Germany. Nice to see you, Barbara. So I want everybody to think of your adjective um, for the sound that you want to get today. So my adjective is velvety. I really want a velvety sound today. And I'm going to be squishing the stick and making the string ring and being very controlled and legato when I pull the bow across the string. Hi, Wendy. Nice to see you. Um, so I wanted to remind everybody that there is a free masterclass next week. It is Cello Freedom Valentine's Edition. Yes. We're going to be doing Can't Help Falling in Love. And I'll be sending out the PDF. If you haven't signed up, sign up above on uh, Cello Nation. It will be pinned in the featured posts above. So you can sign up there, okay? And that's going to be a three-day workshop, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 11 a.m. PST or PDT, as is our fashion. Wendy, I want to sound romantic. I love that, Wendy. And I think velvety is romantic too, right? It's like deeply romantic. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right. That's our instrument. That's what we do. So um, I'm going to tell you my quote for the day, which is, it's always a good idea to warm up with a professional. That's why we're here, right? Always a good idea. Never a bad idea. Okay. So I want to do another exercise today, which is going to have to do with bow placement. I love this exercise. So when you study with teachers, they're always going to be saying to you, you know, you're not playing close enough to the bridge. They always are going to say that to you, right? So this is an exercise that I devised so that no one can say that to you. I mean, they can say it all they want, but you are already thinking about exactly where you want to play on your string. It's not going to catch you off guard when someone says it, right? And you're going to be able to say, oh, yeah, I work on that all the time. Instead of just feeling like diminished when people say that to you, I always feel diminished like, really? I'm not close enough to the bridge. I'm not good enough somehow, right? So we want to come up with a counter to that. At least I do. And I do have to say that my daughter tells me that. <laughs> um, so it's not that you might get more sound going closer to the bridge, right? But we don't all have to get the most giant, biggest, tightest sound in the world. For me, being too close to the bridge, the guys that play really intensely and really need to like project all over the world, I'm not really that kind of cellist. I'm a more introspective, um, emotional player. Not that Yo-Yo Ma isn't, but I don't feel the need to go so close to the bridge, which is good because as you get closer to the bridge, it gets harder to get a sound, right? The string is tighter because it's closer to where it's being stopped, right? So it's harder. As you go up higher, it's easier to make it ring. You can put a little less into it, right? Hi, Micah. Yay, Micah's here from the Netherlands. Okay, so we're going to do the bow um, placement exercise, all right? So I'm gonna get my cello out. Yesterday we talked about the elements of getting a nice sound. If you need to know those, go to yesterday's video and I'll try to make a video page or I'll send them out um, at the end of the week so that they're all together. Hopefully, we'll try. We'll try to get Joshua to do that. Okay, let's do it. 
let's do the exercise from yesterday and then we'll do the new exercise, okay? So the first one from yesterday, we're just gonna do half notes, four per string, just warming up. So just don't even worry about anything. Just relax your shoulders, take a nice deep breath. We'll get in the zone. Put your bow on the string near your bridge. We're gonna do half notes and you can identify an element if you want to. I'm gonna keep mine 90 degrees to the string. That's what I'm working on, okay? Four per string, let's do half notes. See what you got, ready, go. wavers a little bit. I'm trying to make it really smooth so I just want to relax. <sighs> Let your relaxed weight fall down into your arm. Now we're going to do whole notes, okay? Two, uh, no, actually let's do four whole notes per string. Remember, squish the stick if you're not getting it to ring, okay? Relaxed arm weight. Ready, go. One, two, here right I think that's what's making it jump the sound a little bit okay so now we're gonna do eight beats you ready for eight beats eight beats is not easy right okay so I learned this exercise from Zara Nelsova the great cello soloist Zara Nelsova and she said it's not really rocket science and I was like uh, it kind of is because how are you keeping that amazing sound so long for for eight beats and she did it much longer than that so let's try it eight beats we can do it keep your bow 90 degrees to the string keep that angle even when you go out to the tip right okay five okay so we're gonna do two per string two eight note bows right or down and then up and then we'll change strings ready go going to start with your tennis ball in your armpit as you go out let me let me do it on the, the G string tennis balls in the right armpit right I just watched the tennis Netflix series last night did you guys know I'm a tennis player so fun so fun anyway so all the weight is right here right so you don't need any extra help you just put that there and pull it and that'll give weight in the string right but as you go out you want to raise your elbow for leverage so you can um, pour the milk as you get out. So tennis ball in the armpit, you're going out, you're going out, gradually you move in a little, raise your right elbow and pour the milk. So you're pouring the milk to the left, okay? Then as you come back in and you drop the tennis ball, see that? If you come back in, put the tennis ball back in your armpit, you need it there. <laughs> All right, so anyway, that was the first one. So the second one, the one that we're really gonna do today is um, a bow placement exercise, okay? Now remember, this is for those teachers that always tell you you're not close enough to the bridge. You're not close enough to the bridge. Micah, how many teachers have told you you're not close enough to the bridge? They love to complain about that, right? So we're going to find three placements on our string 
and we're going to see where the sweet spot is for us and where we actually like to play. And we're going to consciously choose that spot in this practice today, okay? So for me, I'm going to do right above my fingerboard. This cello, I like playing near the fingerboard on this cello. It gets a big sound. It rings easier. As I get down here, it gets much harder. Now, that's on all cellos, right? But let's do one that's really close to your fingerboard. Then we're going to do number two, move it down a little. And then number three, we're going to move it way down. Three different spots. And then you're going to choose your best. This is one. This is two. This is three. Now, this is very independent practice because I'm not with you and I can't see you. you got to just choose three spots. This is scientific method, right? What do you like best, right? So let's start up here. We're going to do four half notes on the G string, G string, D string, A string. Then we're going to move down to position number two. Same thing, right? And I want you to notice what the difference is. And then we're going to move down to position number three, okay? I would suggest not being too close to the bridge, but that's me. Remember, people are always telling me to play closer to the bridge, but I don't want to do it, right? So I would say not too close or it's going to give you that sound. We don't want that sound. We want three viable spots, and then you're going to choose which spot you want to play, even just for right this moment, okay? All right, so up here, remember to keep a 90 degrees. We're going to do four half notes on each string. Position number one. Ready, go. number two whatever that is for you don't let it move up and down try and keep it in the groove in one groove all the way across okay you ready same thing ready go <laughs> <laughs> 